Prove the identity cos 3x is equal to 4 cos 3x minus 3 cos x. So 4 cos to the power 3 x minus 3 cos x. So we need to prove this. Hence, solve the equation 4 cos to the power 3 x minus 3 cos x is equal to half. For 0 less or equal to x, less or equal to i. So let's do that. Question C. One C. We are proving that cos three x is the same as four cos three x minus three cos x. So you start with the left hand side, cos 3x, write it as cos 2x plus x. Another expansion of cos is cos 2x, cos x minus sine 2x, sine x. But we also know that cos 2x can be taken as cos x plus x, which is cos x, cos x minus sine x, sine x. This is cos 2x. So that here where there's cos 2x, will bring, when you simplify this, is cos squared x minus sine squared x. Now, if we look at the right hand side, it does not have sine. Meaning that whenever you find sign, you change it to cos using the most important identity. And then do the expansion. So you have cos squared x minus one plus cos squared x, giving us two cos squared x minus one. So where there is cos two x, we now have two cos squared x minus one. This is being multiplied by cos x minus sine two x is the same as sine sine two x is the same as sine x plus x, which is sine x cos x plus cos x sine x. Same thing, so we get two sine x cos x. <coughs> so we substitute two cos x sine x where there was sine two x and then multiplied by sine x. So that here now we expand two cos squared x times cos will get two cos three x minus cos x minus two cos x sine squared x. Then again, sine squared x, we know that from this identity, we know that sine squared x is one minus cos squared x. So we get this, substitute where there's sine squared x. So we're going to have two cos three x. Hello. Um, looking back like to cos x, the, the expansion, the expansion of cos x, that why you did x plus x, right? Yes. Um, wasn't there another like cos x missing somewhere there? Uh -uh. It was Since there are three. Was left here. Yeah. I mean, it's a, yes, I think yesterday you like expanded cos 2x minus sine 2x, then there are in brackets because there was another cos outside. Like, yeah, so the, the expansion for us that we are doing this expansion here, 
this, we are doing it directly. Now we have done it separate and then we are getting it as a finished product. Okay, so here we have minus two cos x. Then where the sine squared x, we put one minus cos squared x. Sir. Hello. Oh, I wasn't in the meeting. Can you kindly repeat uh, on the same questions? What do you mean by that question? It was the other. This is when I get what is gone. Mm. This is our second session. <laughs> the first session had <laughs> question 1A and B. My service questions gives me pressure. <laughs> Don't go on, it has been recorded. All right. So we do the expansion here. We have 2 cos 3x minus cos x minus 2 cos x times 1, we get 2 cos x. Negative 2 cos x times negative cos squared x, we get plus 2 cos 3x. Now we have 2 cos 3x plus 2 cos 3x, we get 4 cos 3x. Negative cos x minus 2 cos x, we get minus 3 cos x. But this is the same as what we have on the right hand side. So we have found the problem. So please note that It's not here. You cannot forget the most important identity. You must know how to use this identity here. Not just how, but even when it must be used. Uh, Hello. Sir, do you mind going to another question? What I put them together. Okay. Cos 2x is expanded in the manner we expand cos a plus b. This is cos a cos b minus sine a sine b. So if a is equal to b, and they're all equal to x, then you have this thing here. Giving us cos squared x minus sine squared x. Since you don't want to see sine, you change it using the most important identity. 
1 minus cos square x, which becomes 2 cos square x minus 1. Sine 2 x. Expanded as sine x plus x. It is sine x cos x plus sine x cos x, giving us two sine x cos x. Then, since you now know the expansion of cos, from three you write it as two plus x. Then you expand cos 2x cos x minus sine 2x sine x. Where is cos 2x? You substitute it in a form outside the double one. So you substitute, you have it here, multiplied by cos x. Where is sine 2x? You substitute its form, we have it here. Sine 2x, and then, Well, there is, so now we have done the substitution. What is remaining now is just expansion. So you multiply this part times cos, we get the cos to the power three. This part times cos, you get this one. And then here, we get negative two cos sine squared. Now you don't want to see sine. So you change sine squared again using the same identity. So you change you have here. The work you have is expansion again. So negative two times one, you get negative two cos. Negative two cos times negative cos squared, you get positive two cos to the power three x. Then this, you put together. So you get this one here. Then, hence, solve for cos 3x. Sir. Hello. Um, going back to that part where you, you like expanded everything, I think it, I, I'm not finding a lot of sense there why you said 2 cos x sine x in brackets times sine x. How come the sine x is not multiplying the cos x? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. It's like you have two x y multiplied by z. This is going to be two x y z. The brackets there is just a denotation. This does not mean if we have two x y multiplied by x, it does not mean that we should have two x squared y x. No, it means that we should. If you want to rearrange, you rearrange or you leave it in that same order. If you are rearranging. Then you put it in this form, which is x squared because they are, they are the same. And not that this, the x must be multiplied separately. You multiply x by 2, then you multiply x by x, then x by y. No, it's the same thing. I don't know if it makes sense. Yes, it does. Thank you. So, uh, but it's necessary to split them into the left hand side and the right hand side. Is it not? Then why? What's the necessity of splitting it into the left hand side and right hand side? No, you start with the. You start with one side and the end at another side to show that they are equal.
Because if you're saying they are equal, you start from right, you don't get to the left, then how equal are they? There's no justification. So if they are equal, you must use the other one to obtain the other. Okay, now solving this one, we have just shown that this piece here is the same as cos 3x. So there's no harm in solving cos 3x is equal to half. So we are solving cos 3x is equal to half. Now, since we have a 3x here, Take back the screen, the previous screen. Oh, okay. Then cos 3x, you let, you let theta be 3x. So that this question should look like cos theta is equal to half. Because once we get half, then it becomes a very easy thing now. Which angle gives us half for cos? We know it is theta is equal to sixty. So when theta is sixty, then this is in the first quadrant. What about in the second quadrant? We can't go there because cos is negative. In the third quadrant, cos is negative. In the fourth quadrant, cos is positive. So what is 60 in the fourth quadrant? Which is 360 minus 60, which is 300. So this means that 3x is equal to 60 divided by 3, divided by 3, x is equal to 20. Remember that we, are, we must solve, wow. you know? Why have you taken the negative three X? What do you mean negative three X? Negative three cos X, sorry. Since it was four cos three X minus three cos X. So since, since this is equal to this, And we have this thing equated to half. It will be the same as equating cos 3x to half. You understand? No. Yes, sir. No, sir. If A is equal to B and A is O. What is B? Ani. It's four, sir. It's four. So if this thing is equal to half, then cos three X is equal to half. You understand? Yes. I'm forcing you to understand. <laughs> All right. 
<laughs> so, <clears throat> so, so uh, what happens if you work with that one? Is it even possible? There's more work working with this one as compared to that. Because it will become a polynomial. If you were to let P to be cos X, then you have 4P to the power 3 minus 3P three minus half is equal to 0. Meaning that you have 8P3 minus 6P minus 1 is 0. And start looking for the numbers P that will give you 0. And solve it as a, as a polynomial, which is more work because after doing that, you still come back to P is equal to cos X, meaning you start getting the angles afresh. It's not an easy thing. So now, this means that 3x is equal to 300. If you divide by 3, if you divide by 3, you get x is equal to 100. Now, the gap is too big from 0 to 1, 8. It's possible that there are other numbers there that can satisfy this. Now, because we know that there's an issue of coterminal, it is this here, and 300 is here. This is 300. If we look for coterminal angles of 60, we know 60 has a coterminal angle that goes down and end there. And this angle is 360 plus 60, which is equal to 420. So this is called terminal to 60. So we can use it to say theta is equal to 420, implying that 3x is equal to 420. Divide by 3, divide by 3, we get x is equal to 1, 4, 0. 140. So let's see if one third has a, if 300 has the same behavior, we get an angle and then bring another circle. That will be 300 plus a complete circle 360, which is 660. 660 is a um, equatorial angle to that guy. So we have another theta, which is 6 mm. Equating it to 3x, divide by 3, divide by 3, we we'll get x is equal to 220. 220 is greater than 18. But this is telling us that from 0 to 18. So we leave out this one. We will present those three, but they must be radians. So you multiply by pi over 180 so that we get pi over 9 by pi over 180 so that we get 2 here, 5, 2 here, 9. We get 5 pi over 9 by pi over 180. Here seven, two here nine. So our solution x is pi over nine, x is five pi over nine, x is seven pi over nine. Sir. Yes, sir. <clears throat> sir, now no, what if you use this approach, sir? <clears throat> you say uh you factorize that uh, that equation, you say cos x outside open brackets, you mean you have 
4 cos squared x minus 3. Then since we know that uh, uh, we don't have, uh, uh, since we, we, we equate cos x to half, then this 4, four cos, cos squared x minus 3, that remains in the, in the brackets. We do not have actually on the special angles, there's nothing like that. We forget about it. Rob. So we say cos x is equals to half. David, Rob. in mathematics, sir. Look, in mathematics, mm -hmm. if you have x yes, three uh, minus two x is equal to one, you don't factorize and start equating to one. We don't do this. We only do this if what is on the right is zero. Okay, okay, sir. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I, I was misled by one of the tutors, sir. Ah. <laughs> no, you just misquoted them. They can't be doing that one. <laughs> There's a question that looks the same like this one. It must have been like this. If I have, yeah, I'll send you. So I'll send you the question. Look, if you have this, is equal to four. Mm -hmm. This is okay. You can square root. You can square root, and then begin to equate the inside. Yeah. I'm not the other. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, sir. So. We can do the other question. D. Excuse me, sir. I'm not. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Hello. I'm not really clear on the 300 and the 660. And we only supposed to find them in the first quadrant and in the fourth quadrant. So in the first quadrant, we found 60. In the fourth quadrant, we found 300. Then, since our angle is multiplied by three, it means that we can go around and look for coterminal angles that when divided by three may fall in this range. If that angle was not multiplied by three, would have ended with 60 and 300 only, and only picked 60 because that's the one that lies between zero and pi. But because it's being multiplied by three, it's possible that you can have a big angle and then divide it by three, it will reduce the interval that is required. That's the reason why we've gone beyond 360, looking for the terminal angles of 60 and 300. Though the coterminal for 300 did not work. All right, thank you. Okay. D. D is here. Let x minus 2 be a factor of f of x is equal to x3 minus x squared plus ax plus b. Find the value of a and b, given that the remainder when f divided by x minus 3 is equal to 10. So how do you solve d then? So you say, it's a small issue. So you say, since x minus 2 is a factor, when equated to 0 and we obtain x is equal to 2, the function f of x is x3 minus x squared plus ax plus b should give us f of 2 should be 0. When we use x minus 3 equal to 0 to get x, this function here should give us 10. That is the remainder. Now we substitute what is f of 2 f of 2 is 2 to the power 3 minus 2 squared plus 2a plus b. This should give us 0, which is 8 minus 4 
plus 2a plus b is zero, giving us 2a plus b to be negative four. We got f of three, f of three, that is three power three minus three squared plus three a plus b is equal to 10, that is 27 minus nine plus three a plus b is equal to 10. So three a plus b is 10 minus 18. So three a plus b is negative eight. Now we have two equations. This equation here and that equation there, so that b is equal to negative four minus two a. So that here we have three a, where does b replace negative four minus two a is equal to negative eight. Three a minus two a, we get a minus four is negative eight. So a is equal to negative eight plus four, which is equal to negative four. So B then is going to be negative four minus two by negative four, giving us negative four plus eight, which is equal to four. So we have found A to be negative four and B to be four. Sometimes you can find that this very question is asked in this manner. They say, find A and B given that X squared minus two, X squared minus four is a factor of F of X. This means that you get your X squared minus four equal to zero, you get X is equal to plus or minus two and substitute two in the function, you must get zero. Substitute negative two, you must get zero. You solve. Sometimes they'll ask you, find the values of A and B, given that X squared minus four gives a remainder three X minus one. So you still get X squared minus four, you get to zero and you get X is equal to plus or minus two. And then go to the function and say, f of two should be equal to three by two minus one. And f of negative two should be equal to the remainder three, negative two minus one. Wherever there is x in f and in the remainder, you substitute the numbers two and negative two. And you arrive at this uh, two equations with constants on the right and then you solve for A and B. So you, so you don't get memorized questions to understand what's going on. So that if they change the remainder, they change the factors, you are still able to work around uh, the change. Okay, let's log out and quickly log back. We have to do two. We need to start, to start two. Uh, Hello. A, a quick summary, please. A quick summary is you should understand what it means for a number to be a factor. If we say two is a factor of four, we mean that you can divide four by two and the remainder will be zero. And if you are told that when you divide seven by three, the remainder is one, that means that seven over three should give you something, remainder one. So if that was a function, then when you substitute three in the F, you must get one as a remainder. Once you have that information, then you are able to 
work out these questions. And it's not health to forget. <laughs> not health to forget. Very, very dangerous for academic life. It's a threat to your mind. So let's log out and log back. Let's be quick. <laughs> 